does that feel, super sub, off the bench to win the game late and take Arsenal top of the table? Yeah, it feels amazing. Um, you know, I've been working hard for these moments and uh, today I got it paid back and I'm just happy to help the team with that. And what about your goal too? You watched that ball all the way when it was whipped into the box. Yeah, I mean, it was a brilliant uh, goal um, and a brilliant pass as well. So, um, yeah, I think we, we train this routine quite a lot in training as well. So I know uh, B or Bukayo or Martin, they, they love to play these balls. So yeah, it was a good goal. You mentioned it there as well. You've had to show so much perseverance because the goals haven't come easy since joining Arsenal. No, of course. Uh, football is always hard work and, uh, you know, nothing comes from itself. You have to work and have to, to keep belief. I know it was was tough for me the last couple of months, but uh, yeah, I tried to put my ego aside as well because the team is the most important thing. And these Arsenal fans, this away support here at Brentford tonight, singing your name. How much do you owe it to the Arsenal fans for keeping patient with you as well? You know, uh, I've been thankful, so thankful for these guys as well because uh, I know it's always hard when a new signing comes and they, they pay a lot of money for you, so they, they, they sometimes uh, think it goes quite, quite easy and quite fast, but uh, yeah, I'm just thankful for all of them to keep supporting me. Well done. Thank you. Arsenal top of the table. It really was clear at the end there just what that meant to him today because it was a massive opportunity for them, Rio, and, and a test for them as well, which they had to pass. Yeah, huge test. This, this place has been a fortress. Um, teams have struggled, big teams have struggled for, for a couple of years now coming here. Brentford have found a way of playing against big teams and really kind of nullifying their threats. And they've done that for much part today. And mm. Arsenal, as I said before, looked quite laboured at times of playing the ball quite slowly, didn't really get out of, out of first gear in attacking areas. And the, the two moments they did, they looked had a bit of quality, got it out of his feet, Saka, and produced two moments of class. They had real goal, goal opportunities, one of them turning out to be a goal. So Arsenal will be delighted with that. And again, there's nothing better than when seeing yourself as top of the league. No matter how you get there, you're top of the league, put your feet up on a Sunday and watch the other results come in. Absolutely. Let's have a look at how they won it then, Peter. I know it was the assist that, that really mm. stood out for you. Yeah, just, you know, being a player that, you know, thrives off the back post uh, <laughs> myself. You know, when you see that, your eyes light up. I know Havertz would have done it. It was actually great movement. Declan Rice, who I thought was magnificent, rightly got the, the man of the match. Um, you know, when you have it, say, you look at his movement, he comes alive. He just knows just before he's about to, uh, to pull his foot back and cross that ball. And he comes alive, makes his move really quickly, gets on the, on the wrong side of the defender. Uh, but what a ball this is. It gives Saka that, that space. He's got a wand of a left foot and your eyes light up as a striker. That's just it's perfection, a ball like that. Sometimes when the ball's that good, it doesn't matter what type of defender. You can sit and try and criticise defending at times. But when the ball's that good, and the timing of the run is that that perfect. You can't defend certain situations like that, and that is one of those. Mm. It's a great, great ball. And also, you know, in the first half, I talked about uh, Jesus heading the ball down. Havertz was textbook mm. there, just headed it down. So difficult for the keeper to stop that. Mm. That reaction from Arteta with him at the end, it's obviously his player you brought in for, for big money. And for him to, to come under criticism, which he does quite a lot, then deliver like that is sort of justifies the, the manager's decision, do you think? No, it's, it's, just, it's a big relief. I think you look at the situations and big moments in your career or big moments in the season, a lot of it, the emotion is relief. And I think that would be that there. Satisfaction, relief. And, 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 and listen, this is why you're here. It's, it, sometimes players can't come in and just be everything to everyone immediately. They can have moments that might be the catalyst for this next phase of his career of, of positivity and a real upturn in form. This could be that. And you're looking for one of those moments or situation. Hopefully this is it for Havertz because he has fantastic ability, great potential. You just want to see it on a consistent basis. And sometimes you need that moment. We'll see if today was that. And he's so versatile as well. He was mm. playing a left back, left wing back for, for Germany in the international break mm. piece. How much of a difference maker can he be for Arsenal, do you think, going forward? Well, he's had big moments. He had big moments for Chelsea. You know, Champions League final springs to mind. He's had, you know, that again, that's a massive goal. But he looks like a confidence player, like a streaky player, if you like. I think if he, uh, you know, if, if that, that goal there can, can galvanise him, I think he could go on a good run now and be a, be a decent player for Arsenal. And a clean sheet for them today. Can we say that defence is now Arsenal's biggest strength? Boring, boring Arsenal. We're going to go back to George Graham days, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> no, but I, I think me and Crouchy were sitting there going, them two centre-halves, yeah. they look like they want to defend. They want to play 1v1 at the back, play a high line, be aggressive. They've got the best defensive uh, record in the league, conceded 10 at the moment, and they look supremely confident. I think Declan Rice in front of them give them that 
platform to 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 kind of sit there and shore things up. But like that little triangle is going to be so important for this team going forward, and if they're going to be successful. The win percentage when Gabrielle and, and Saliba start together is 75%. It drops off to 53 mm. when they don't start together. What makes them such a good pairing, do you think? Pace. Today's game, if you've got pace, you're ahead straight away. And I think that, that you can't play on the high line and, and, and really high and aggressive if you haven't got that pace to run in behind. And these two strikers here today for Brentford have given all teams problems. Not in this situation, there's nothing to do with the centre-halves here, but... For the last two seasons, Ivan Tony, uh, Wit Wissa, they've all given teams nightmares because of their pace and their aggressive running. These two guys just mopped it up. One moment in this game where the strikers get the better of, of, of Saliba, who's there to clean it up and mop it up? Gabriel. And then he gives it back to Saliba and they, they, they get out of it. But they're a really good pair and they're working into a great pairing at the moment. And to win anything, you have to have a really good centre-back mm. pair in, in, in this day and age. Yeah, I think, I think those two. Because all the best teams, they, they, they're confident in their centre-halves 1v1. And, and with these two, you just you don't think that they're going to get beat. I mean, they're, they're absolute... Vissa and, um, and Bermo are, are, are so, so quick, lively, difficult to play against. I thought they handled them really well. And even when those two are isolated, Declan Rice is, always mm. seems to be in the right position. Um, you know, he carries the ball so well. He's almost like two central midfielders in there. The two centre-backs, they, they'll be the reason why I would put them ahead of Liverpool in the title race to challenge someone like Manchester City because I think them two, you can trust those two implicitly at the moment. They're in bang on in form and they only look like that partnership's going to grow uh, the way they're playing at the moment. Is it too simplistic to say they would have won the title last season if Saliba had a stayed fit? For the whole... Yeah, it's difficult to say. I think Manchester City were well deserved the, the, the title, but um, yeah, it might have been closer because on the evidence of what we're seeing now, it's like a real partnership that's, mm. uh, that's here to stay. And um, you know, they, they're so comfortable in one v one situations. They're calm on the ball, um, and of course, with Declan Rice in front of them, that's uh, it's, it's half the reason why they've got such a good record. And the only thing is, that I can add to that, Crash, is that. They don't mind coming places like this and having to fight. That's the big difference as well. There's some players that when, it, when it's good and going well, they, they look good. These guys don't mind rolling up their sleeves as well and doing the ugly stuff, which is a real testament to them as a mm. partnership. Defences win your titles, so yes, they, they do. say, yes, don't they? Yes, they do, people. Yes, they do. <laughs> Defences win titles. There you go. And Arsenal, at <laughs> the, the moment, number nines. have the best in the league. I'll let these two argue that out during the break. Cal, how huge was that to find a way to win a difficult game and go top of the Premier League table? Yeah, great. We are so happy. I think we fully deserve to win the game. I think the team competed extraordinarily well. Uh, we played and we had some big moments. Uh, we should have scored much earlier than that. But it's a really tough place to come. Credit to them for what they do because they make it really hard for every team here. But um, I think we showed, you know, a lot of resilience and a lot of belief. And we were really patient when we had to be and we competed really well. How pleased were you as well for Kai Havertz, of all players, to be the one to get that winner? They're like, you just have to see the reaction of everybody, how much they love him, how much he brings to the team and, uh, and it's what he needs to do, you know. And, uh, and today we believe that he could change the game in those moments the way they were defending and uh, it was the perfect timing, perfect execution and, and he won the game for us. That were big players do. And you kept a clean sheet with Aaron Ramsdale in goal. All eyes were on him. How did you think he did out there? I think I'm so happy with the, the team that... The way he performed, we got the clean sheet and I'm so happy the way everybody played. He was a bit nervy at times. Is that understandable considering he was being taunted by the crowd at times as well? I think the team was exceptional today. And in terms of Brentford, how difficult did they make it out there for you to create those chances? You had a couple of goal, goal line clearances as well. Yeah, we, we made a, a, a huge mistake just before that and then Zin, I think he was the one that clears his off the line. You need some moments like that. We need some moments that we should have scored more goals as well. But uh, overall, you need uh, things to go your way as well in, in those uh, fine margins to win games. Things have gone your way today and you now sit top of the Premier League table exactly where you want to be right now. Exactly where we want to be and we want to continue to be. And that shows in this league with the level that there is this season and that the team is in a, in a really good place. But you just have to see the behaviour and, and the way the players fight and work and, and how much they want it. And uh, it's a joy to work with them. Thanks, Mikel. Thank well you. Done. Yeah, what a way to mark his 200th game in charge. More wins in that time than all the other Arsenal managers before him. What do you think of the way he's evolving this Arsenal team? Yeah, well, they're a team, as I said before, they're full of character. They're, they've got a resilience about them now.
um, and they're doing the hard yards and the dirty work they seem. They seem to enjoy that. And you see that the, I said about relief and you talk about when they get a result like they did today, you can see that it's, there's a togetherness with this squad and they, there's a belief in them. There's a steeliness that you need. Um, and they've got players that are stepping up. Now, we said before, they haven't got that number nine that gets them 20 foot, like an Erling Haaland or a Salah in this team. So they're all going to have to be important at different times and get maybe five or six of them around the 10, 15 goal mark to have a chance of winning this league. But also, the defence is going to give them a good chance as well. But the unity, I think, is the more impressive thing about this team rather than any individual at the moment. Absolutely. And he, and he does talk about individual players, but he, he seemed a bit reluctant to talk about Aaron Ramsdale, <laughs> mm. Peter. Did, did you think? Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's slightly bored of the subject, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we keep talking about it. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Arsenal fans are bored of the subject as well. But unfortunately, it is, it is a, it's not something that uh, happens all the time. You've got two kind of number one goalkeepers. You know, no one thought Aaron Ramsdale really did anything wrong. Uh, and then obviously he, he's been replaced. So it is a... A topic of discussion, but not one that Mikel Arteta likes to talk about. Do you think we potentially don't see him now in that Arsenal goal until the FA Cup in January? I'd be surprised if, if, if Raya is available for selection. I think I'd be surprised to see him until a cup game. I was going to say, Juka, do, 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 do you think Ramsdale stays come the summer? I, I think it all depends on on, on how he games. If it continues like this and he, he doesn't play, I think he's got to move, he's got to move on. I think the, uh, you know the England manager said he wants to be part of the the, the England setup certainly for the Euros and, and and going forward he's got a, a stake on the on the number one jersey. But he has to be playing, has to be, mm. and it doesn't look like he's going to be here. Do you think he goes in January? I'm the same as Crouchy. I think if he doesn't play the, the right amount of games in the Premier League, in the big games or Champions League as well then I don't see Aaron Ramsdale coming. I think he's, he's, he's worked so hard to get to the top. His journey hasn't been there. It's been quite a unique journey. Different clubs, lower leagues, a couple of relegations in there. He's had that adversity, got to the top, and then now he's having to fight and climb again um, through no real fault of his own in terms of performance. So um, I, th I think he'll find it difficult to stay here as a number two. OK, well, this one would have been a hard one to take for Brentford. They kept the Gunners at bay until the 89th minute. Let's hear from Thomas Frank with Jules. Thomas, that must be difficult to take losing the game so late on. Ah, uh, yeah, of course it is. It it is. That's the that's the tough one in in in, in this beautiful game. We all love that uh, uh, that we lose a game where I think we do so many things right. I think this is a game that should should have been a draw. I think there was uh, two chances to each team. Uh, we had the big one for Brian, a big one for Neil. They had a good header for Jesus uh, for the disallowed goal, uh, and. That the goal is caught. Um, we managed to keep them very, very quiet throughout the game. Uh, managed to keep Saka and Martinelli very quiet throughout the game. Uh, and then Saka had one fantastic moment, fantastic cross that that decided the game. Unfortunately, so this was a this was a, leader, a, a you know very even game. It should have been a draw. Either team could have won. It could it could easily have been us. Early on in the second half, and Buermo had that chance that could have put Brentford in front. Is it moments like those that you just have to take against opponents like Arsenal? Uh, yeah, uh, of, of course it is. Uh, those moments we need we need to take. Um, and then unfortunately we <laughs> we didn't do that uh, today. So this this was a uh, was another good performance uh, from us. Uh, we have now played 13 games, 12. 12 good performances, so is this we need uh, to keep uh, building us on. Uh, of course, it's, it's tougher to take when you lose in the last couple of minutes uh, of the game, uh, in a game where we did more than enough to easily get a draw and it could easily have been us that won. Uh, with Arsenal picking up all three points in a very significant game from the Gunners. We'll analyse it all, but we are going to head to a break before that. Let's just remind you of how this Super Saturday has planned out, and it really has been a Super Saturday, with Manchester City and Liverpool drawing in the opening game to retain the top two spots in the Premier League table. Burnley, well, they went ahead, didn't they? But then West Ham came back with a Suchek late goal to win 2-1. Luton, wow, their first home game of the Premier League season. They beat Crystal Palace, Newcastle. Well, they had, what, eight senior players out through injury and ver for various reasons, actually, before the international break. And they came back with a bang, beating Chelsea 4-1. Forest against Brighton. Well, Brighton have scored and conceded in every single game this season. And that was very much the story of their game today, which they did win in the end. 3-2 away from home against Forest. Sheffield United lost out at the hands of Bournemouth. A big win for Bournemouth. And there you go, confirmation of our late result with Arsenal. Leaving it late to beat Brentford at the G-Tech Community Stadium. Tomorrow, the action continues. It's Spurs against Aston Villa. 
Everton after their 10 point deduction will play Manchester United. There'll be lots said about that one, no doubt. And then on Monday night, we've got Fulham against Wolves. We've had a really good season. And let's see what this all means for the Premier League table. Well, it is. The bottom half there that you can see with Brentford who drop into the bottom half in 11th there going further down the table. It is Sheffield United, Everton and Burnley who occupy those bottom three spots. But most significantly, let's have a look at that top half and there you see it. Arsenal fans, that's for you. Top of the tree. What a moment, hey? One point above Manchester City with Liverpool just behind and Tottenham in fourth of course tottenham have a chance to climb up into second as well should they win their game tomorrow rated the two sides today and hopefully we will hear from him very shortly but from you guys in the studio what did you make of it it was it was a hard watch at times let's be honest but it was all about the points for arsenal yeah i think brentford do a really good job they make it difficult for you and arsenal won at their best um but brentford are a stable premier league side for a reason you know they make it difficult they play to their strengths they're defensively a good side, and they play a lot of long balls, and they work the channels. So Arsenal has to work really hard for that today, but I think they'll be delighted. Keep a clean sheet, win the game. Uh, obviously, Havertz gets you know gets some minutes, and, and Ramsdale played as well. So I think everybody can be quite happy, really. It'll be a very positive dressing room right now, I can imagine. Yeah, of course, because again, you, you've won a game where you haven't played that well at all. Um, but we've found that a lot of whilst with this season. But again, positive Ramsdale clean sheet, and no. Bit of an iffy first half. And Kai Havertz making an impact because I think a lot of Arsenal fans are waiting for that. Well, 65 minutes. We know there's a talented player. I mean, Owen spoke about it. He's a, he's a big fan of his. You've seen he scored goals in Champions League final. He's a big game player, but it just hasn't quite happened for him yet. So you think on that performance, him coming and making a real impact, maybe this might kickstart his season. It might do indeed. Well, let's actually have a look at Kai Havertz's goal. And also, Owen, why are you such a big fan of Kai? Do you know, I actually, I actually feel a little bit for him because he's a really talented player. But he's almost too versatile. He can play, you know, midweek for Germany, he played as a wing back and as a left back. Today he came on, he played as a centre forward. Tell me another player in the world that would do that. You know, he can play as a right, a right winger, he can play as a number 10. But I think he has so, an amazing skill set. Technically he's very good. I think one of his most underrated attributes is his heading. Physically he's got a great size, he's in a great position at the back post. Just put it up there for him. You know, and, it, and, it's, and it's a really good finish. But I think at some point, I think Kai needs to specialise in what he's going to be. Udegaard's the playmaker, Saka's the, the right winger, Martinez the left winger. Kai can play five positions, but at some point I think somebody needs to say, Kai, we need you to play there. And I think if he plays there for a full season, he can be a brilliant player. And where would that position be for you then, Owen? I don't even think he knows. I think, mm. I think naturally he's at number 10, but Udegaard plays there. I think he can play on the right, but Saka plays there. Yeah, I think he's, he can be a very good centre forward for Arsenal. Um, so I think at some point maybe Mikel needs to say, right, Kai, let's, let's specialise. What are we going to turn you into? Right now, I think he's a Swiss Army knife. He can do a lot of things. But I think he needs to specialise, and I think he can be a special player. Well, that's brilliant for a player to have such versatility. And great for the manager as well. It is, yeah. But as Owen was saying there, it's probably working against him. Because yeah. where the two best players in the team are Odegaard and Saka, and they're probably his two best positions. But as you said, I think he can play centre-forward. It's just about what works well for him. I think if you're going to put him up there and try and play the same way you play with Gabriel Jesus or Enketia, you won't see the best of him. But if you get the ball crosses in the box, let him link play, then I think he could be a really good, certainly centre forward for, for Arsenal, as, as Owen was saying. So in the build-up to this match, the spotlight, as we discussed, was very much on Aaron Ramsdale. Mm. And it was really nice to see those full-time scenes of the fans really supporting Ramsdale and also his players and his teammates. He sort of had... It was kind of a tale of two halves for him. He had some bad moments and some really good moments. But you know what? He, they didn't lose the game. And he made a couple of mistakes, but they actually didn't hurt the team. And that is, that's the real positive, I think. Obviously, you know, it was a big moment for him. David Ryan not playing. Um, and one of the reasons Ryan's in is because he's so good with his feet. So obviously, it's not Ramsdale's greatest attribute. Uh, this one here, you know, it just doesn't look... It doesn't look great. And I think for him, that would have, Bensi, that would have been hmm. tough to make a mistake like that. And that's to continue on. This, this one was actually even, even worse. Yeah, this, this, this one, I don't know wh where he's trying to throw it. And it's, it's one of those where maybe last second someone moves and he's like, oh no, I can't throw it there. And that ends up happening. But as I said, he reacted really well second half. Was asked to do one or two things. I thought this was very good, really composed. And I almost felt like maybe at the start of the game, 
He was trying to show everyone that he, he has got good feet. We all know already that he's got good yeah. attributes with his feet. His passing's very good. But because David Rea has been brought in this very silky the way he passes and some of his touches, it's almost like he was trying to overcompensate my guy and I'm going to show everyone how good I am rather than just, you know, relaxing and doing what made him Arsenal's number one in the first place. But it's a positive. It's a clean sheet. But he'll look back at this and think, oof, thank goodness for that. Because it was a tough afternoon for him. He's a good, he, you know, he's a really not likable guy, yeah. Aaron Ramsdale. And I think we all want to see him do well. And when it's difficult for a player, you kind of push through it. I thought he, he did that today in, in, in quite tough circumstances for him. Yeah, well, let's have a look also at a fantastic save, but not from either goalkeeper, from Zinchenko. This was a fantastic clearance off the line. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we saw Declan Rice do one in the first half, which was very good. And Zinchenko here, sense in danger. It's a great ball from Mbwema, by the way. Just stands up. Morpe gets there before, ahead of Tomiyasu, but he just anticipates danger. <laughs> Would Ramsdale have saved it behind? I'm not sure, because it looks like he's diving backwards, but this is great defender from Zinchenko. Yeah, you know, that's just like game intelligence, instincts, you know, where to be in the right moment. Little moments like that, you know, help decide games. Um, and it was huge from Zinchenko there. Just, you've got to be in the right place at the right time, and he, and he did just that. You're looking at this Arsenal side as a whole. How much have they evolved, or have they actually evolved from last season, from that experience that they had of sort of staying at the top of the table for so much of the season and then eventually losing out to Manchester City. Have they evolved from that point for you? Yeah, I think they would have gained a lot from that experience. Um, again, we, we know they haven't played as well, but I think when it comes to crunch time at the end of the season, if they're there or thereabouts, I think they'll handle it this time around a lot better than they did last year. A little bit novice last season where maybe let points slip and maybe didn't know how to see out certain games, but listen, this time, if it happens again this season, I think they'll be in a better place. Well, Owen, seeing as he's one of your favourite players and you really admire his qualities, we've decided that we are going to chat to him live now. Kai Havertz, it's an absolute pleasure to have you join us here in the Premier League studio. And congratulations on, on scoring the winning goal. How did that feel? Uh, hello, first of all, and uh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a special feeling for me. You know, I've been working hard to, to get these moments and uh, yeah, I'm just uh, thankful uh, to, to help the team today. It was a big moment. It was a really big moment to score that goal because, of course, your team have now gone top of the Premier League table. That dressing room must be filled with celebrations right now. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, these late wins are always special um, away from home. And, um, yeah, to, to score at the end of the game and then celebrate with our fans is always, uh, you know, very nice. So, um, yeah, everyone enjoyed that moment in the changing room as well. We've actually been talking in the studio about your position and, and how you've evolved in this Arsenal side. How did it feel to have that celebratory moment with Mikel Arteta because he looked absolutely delighted. What did he say to you? Yeah, um, it was a special moment for me as well, you know, to, to celebrate in front of uh, the fans uh, with the boss and, and all the players. And, you know, it means a lot uh, to me because I think... Me personally, and I think everyone else, every one of the, the players, you know, you play football because of those moments. And uh, yeah, these moments, uh, they make me proud. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for everyone that, you know, kept uh, going with me, especially because it was some, I had some tough uh, weeks and months. But, you know, I'm happy and I hope, uh, you know, I'm, I can do this now in the, in the next few games as well. Guy, first of all, I want to say congrats on the goal. I know it probably means a lot to you scoring the winner, taking Arsenal top. What do you think? I mean, obviously, I see you play a lot with, with Leverkusen and with Germany. What would you say is your best position? Because I think you can be, you're so good in so many. What, what do you think is your favorite position to play? Uh, to be honest, I don't even know anymore because uh, I think uh, I've played so many positions in the last couple of uh, years. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, and really, I mean this honestly, I, I, I don't mind it even anymore um, where, where I play. You know, I'm just happy to, to be on the pitch. Of course, you know, I'm a player who wants to be, wants to play offensive football, who wants to attack the box and the goal as well. Um, you know, I, I scored some goals in the past and I, you know, this is, this is the best thing for me. But, um, you know, I want to help the team wherever I can. But, uh, yeah, I played as a nine now the last couple of games in Germany. I played even on the left side. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. It was a huge win for you guys today. And congratulations also on, sc on scoring that winning goal. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Brilliant. Kai Havertz live there from the GTEC Community Stadium. And 
his versatility is actually incredible. When you think about it and with what you said of how many positions he can play in, it is amazing. And actually, Mikel Arteta certainly believes in him because he's the only player to have started every Premier League game for Arsenal this season. Yeah, but you know what? I, I, I thought he would answer that question that way because he's played so many positions. And, it's you know, I actually feel for him. I think it's really difficult for him. Everybody else gets to play pretty much the same position every game. And Kai, because he can play in a lot of positions, he gets kind of put in all these different positions. I think at some point someone needs to help him and say, you know, let's, let's be a center forward for me, be a number 10, be, you know, be a winger, be, you know, be an extra central midfield player. Right now he, he's, he can do all these things. And every game, depending on what the game needs, he can do it. But I think that, that's impacting his consistency by playing all these different positions. So I'd love to see him do well because I think he's a, he's a really nice kid. But he, technically, I think he's a fantastic player. This will be enthralling. I'm Derek Ray, joined in the commentary position by Lee Dixon. And every reason to believe we're in for an entertaining match here. It's Brentford versus Arsenal. Thanks, Derek. I'm sure both coaches will want their players to start with a real zip in their play. Really show the opposition what they're in for. That could lead to fireworks. Let's hope so. Bukayo Saka. Martin Odegaard. Not even close in the end, Lee. Well, he's had a go, Derek. He's gone for power, but the accuracy just wasn't there, was it? And so the starting 11 for Arsenal. Thomas Partey starts with Granit Xhaka in the centre of the pitch. And the starting role in attack is handed to Alex Lacazette. And scope for them to produce something exciting. And it crossed the byline, a goal kick as a result. Hector Bellerin. Saka. The defenders will certainly have done their homework, Lee, and on that basis must keep more than a weather eye on Lacazette. Well, when you're playing against the players... It certainly wasn't a clean tackle, and the referee has got to book him, I think. So early in this game, and the referee not really hesitating. A yellow card it is, and that could make it difficult for player and official. Well, it changes the complexion of your game, the way you play your match, especially if you're a defender. You start thinking about the challenges instead of executing them. Lacazette. Jacker with it. Well, they're on the scent of something positive. Oh, what an opportunity. It looked as though Arsenal were poised to strike first. Oh, it's a great chance. A great chance for the opening goal. He's just missed. Jensen. Mbermo. 